Looking at factoring special forms, the first one we look at is one that you'll see most often, and that's when you have a difference of two squares. If you have a difference, has to be a difference, and your first item's a perfect square and your last item's a perfect square, then it can be factored in this form. Notice the signs are different. If you FOIL this, you'll have a times a, which is a squared, a times negative b, which is a negative a b, positive b times a would be a positive a b, and last times last would be a negative b squared. Now if you heard me, I said negative a b plus a b. The middle two terms eliminate themselves, and the only way that that can happen if it's in this form. Now, knowing your perfect squares would be a good idea because then you can look at numbers and know if they're perfect squares or not. So, in this first one, I do have a difference. Anytime your variable is raised to an even power, it is a perfect square. So, I'm going to factor this. I always put my plus first, then my minus. I've got a reason for that, and it'll be a little bit later. So, if you take square root of x squared, or divide exponent by 2, you get an x. Square root of 4 is 2. If you FOIL that, you'll come right back up with the x squared minus 4. In this one, that's a perfect square. That's a perfect square, as is that number. So let me do my two parentheses, a plus and a minus. Square root of 81 is 9. Square root of x squared is x, so those the 9x has to be in the front end of the parentheses. Square root of 49 is 7. So that's what I mean, looking at the numbers and knowing if they're perfect squares. I've got some more. I have a difference. That's a perfect square, as is that, as is that. So quickly, two parentheses, a plus and a minus. Square root of 9 is 3. Square root of 16 is 4. Square root of x to the 10th, divide exponent by 2, that would be x to the 5th. That's the answer for that problem. Back here I do have a difference, but the 3 is not a perfect square, so that stops it right there. Another thing that stops it is a 5. It's not evenly divisible by 2. Let's try this one. I have a difference. Both of those are perfect squares, as are, is those two. Square root of 25x squared is 5x, so place that in the first position. Square root of 4y would be 2y. So there's that. Now it says here, factor out the um, greatest common factor, then factor the difference of two squares. Um, you're not going to have directions like that. Your directions will be factor completely. So you always have to look for the greatest common factor. So in this first one, I see a 3 and an x. Okay. I'm going to bring the 3x down. I've got a difference of perfect squares. So I've got 2x squared of 1. And so that's this is the answer. That is factoring it completely. And this one, let's see. I say a 5 will come out. If I factor out a 5, that will give me, I believe, 16. Yep. Plus, that would be 25. That is my answer. Notice it's a plus. If it were a difference, it would be different. So you got to be careful. If I'm given a problem like this, just that, where I can't factor out anything, that right there is prime. It's not factorable. This is not considered prime because I could at least pull out a common monomial. Now repeated factorization. Okay. Square root of x to the fourth would be x squared. Square root of 81 is 9. Anytime you have an exponent larger than 2, beware. 
this will go again. This one is that's as far as it can go. This one is a difference of perfect squares. Now, that's my final answer. Okay? So, you've got some problems. I've got a little bit more to do with this, but I'm only going to do, uh, try to do a short video at a time. Thank you.